So the running theme of the last couple of episodes has been me talking about my storage system, right? And now I've hit another snag because <laughs> I've run out of shulker shells. And for the smarty pants out there going to write a comment, I always leave one of each item in every slot inside of our shulker box because all of this ender chest system works with the storage system I want to build. But the big problem is that we've used up our shulker shells. And the farm that we built here in the end dimension with vintage beef unfortunately stopped working. All of the shulkers just disappeared out of the farm and it stopped producing shells. Well, as you can see from this rail right here, I managed to snag one from inside of this room. And since I made this out of slabs and rails and shulkers can't teleport to either of those, I can actually just leave it going all the way in in case the farm ever dies again. But it's been A-OK, -okay, 100% fine. This thing has survived an overnight AFK session. And I did a replay just in case it did die. Maybe we could use that to figure out what happened to the shulkers and why it stopped working. I guess that will remain a mystery because it's still working just fine. And it's produced an insane amount of shells. I had to expand the storage down here a little bit because we now have... <laughs> Six shulkers of shells and a little bit more to spare. That's pretty good for one overnight AFK session. This will probably last me the rest of the season. As for Beef, I'm pretty sure he's going to need to use the farm a few more times as he has the shulker permit. So I'm going to drop off four of these boxes for him. Oh, and these interiors are gorgeous. Loving it. Um, I'm, I'm just going to throw down these boxes right here next to the kitchen. By the way, Ending Credits now has a video on that farm, so if you want to see it, check the description box below for a link. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft server, where I've been working on the path that goes from my area over to Ijevin's. You'll notice on the left hand side we've got pink pedals, but something rather different on the right hand side. Initially, I wanted to emulate the path that runs through this area, but I think as it spreads across the server, it's good to have a few iterations. So I'm actually going to be punching these pink pedals out. We also used rooted dirt on the opposite side around the edges a little bit, and I think what we'll do is we'll change it up over here and go with some of these brown mushroom blocks. That will help just naturally distinguish the paths as they sort of transition into a new area. Anyways, I won't be done with this for some time because we have to finish the storage system and then build another temple around it. And once that's in place, we'll then know where the walls are and we'll be able to do something similar like we've done on this side. So I've taken our kind of like overgrowth idea that we've done a lot with, extended it around here and where it gets close to the building, some of those leaves have died out and there's some you know, bits of wood to kind of hold it all back and stuff. And so we'll be repeating that on the opposite side. But like I said, long way to go. And the path itself extends a long way too. As you can see, going all the way up to the edge here, we're going to have a bridge once false builds the waterfall and the river. You can see some prep work has been done there. And I've added the path going up to Ijevin's mailbox and through his base. Anyways, the lack of rooted dirt really gave me the impetus that we need to kick things up a gear and get stuff rolling over at Loglands. So at the end of the last episode, we created what you could say is going to be the heart of all future operations. It is this bone mill farm, and you might look at it and think, wait, it's a moss farm, right? Well, we're basically composting all of those items to turn it into bone mill. And this thing is insanely loud, so I'm going to turn it off while we're over here in the area. And the first thing we're going to do is actually wire up something to this input here so that you can see how we're going to automate this process of creating bone mill. So it's down here in these chests that we store bone mill. And if we were to run out of that, we would want to create a signal. Well, underneath here, there is a redstone torch, a little bit obscured. Uh, but this would turn on if we were to run out of bone mill in that chest. So all we have to do is point this into the input. Let's go ahead and simulate us running out of bone mill by chucking all of this away. Okay, I'm going to put it back in a moment. Don't worry. Look, we'll chuck away the last bit and that then creates this signal. So it turns on the farm and then a little bit of bone mill is going to come through here eventually, land in this chest and turn the farm off automatically. Okay, it's taken a moment, but I can see some of the bone mill coming through and there you go. It automatically turns off. Now, an important thing to note here is that we have a stockpile of bone mill down below. 
We're going to refer to this as the bone mill silo. And this, my friends, is the spot where we're visually going to be able to see how much bone mill is stored in our silo. The reason that it's high up is because then we're going to supply all of the other farms from this central spot with bone mill, as so many of them are powered by bone mill. And of course, as they consume that resource, this farm will kick into effect. And we might even find other sources of bone mill to feed into the same silo. So in a bit, I'm actually going to rip this out and have our water stream come all the way across and send the items up. This goes higher than the redstone lamps that you saw before. That is because up here is where the storage process begins. And there are some comparators hidden in there. I'm not sure if it's easy to show you or not. Yeah, this has been designed so that it powers the block next to the redstone lamp. So on the side here, it actually powers these blocks on the side. Then the other comparators that are in the middle row, they power a block behind the redstone lamp. So for each chest, each double chest that fills up, one of these lamps turns on. And to jog your memory, just in case it wasn't clear, this is an issue because if you directly power a lamp, you also power the one next to it. Then down here at the very bottom, we start to split up our stockpile. And this is still part of the stockpile. But as you'll see, we take a double chest, turn it into two double chests, turn it into four. And that gives us eight hopper outputs. So these outputs will then travel around like a hopper chain going to different parts of this area and feeding the different farms that we're going to create. The first one I want to do today, though, is not the rooted dirt farm. I've actually got something... A little simpler that just popped into my mind I thought would be cool to add in the area. And we shall be doing that next because I've added the water stream to take the bone mill up top. The farm isn't running at the moment because I've hooked up that redstone that I described. However, I hooked it up to the bottom of our silo. So there's actually room for more. But down here you'll see all of this has been filled up all the way. There is a reason I did it like this, because I obviously have other sources of bone mill, like from our mob farm. And so this area here is going to act like a top-up. I want to be able, though, to just drop this off and leave it, so we can use a crafter to turn these bone blocks into bone mill. And that is what this little contraption that I cooked up is. It's quite easy to explain as well. This crafter gets fed the bone blocks, but when it creates bone mill, it makes nine at a time. So eventually it's going to fill up this hopper. Because of that, we have to take a signal from the side here. The other signal that we take is from the crafter itself going through to this redstone torch. So we have two active inputs on this piston here. And its job is to activate this clock created by these two observers. It powers the block underneath the crafter. So if there aren't too many items in here, and there are indeed items inside of the crafter, it will then power it. And we can see that in action just by dumping some bone blocks into here. And it should get started. Did I, I misset something up somewhere? Yep, it was this crafter right here. Accidentally set it to nine. Now you can see it doing its thing. Now there's too much bone meal in here, so it stopped. And then as there's less in there, the signal strength will weaken and it will craft a few more. So I put most of my bone blocks in here. We've now got a shulker box with just a few for an example. So... When I place this down, it's going to activate the comparator, and that pushes down this sticky piston, which has an observer below it. This is important because it's only when this thing empties that this pulls up, and then it powers this target block. So the piston will push out, but it'll also lock this hopper, meaning that the shulker box is going to end up on top of the comparator and get sucked up just like that and go down into the barrel. Perfect timing right there. So in the future, another thing that I might do is add a dispenser to this system so I can load it up with a bunch of shulker boxes. But for now, I can just place one at a time and all of that will get slowly unloaded. This will stock up our silo, which remember is going to split the bone mill up into eight different tracks. And now I've built one of those. You'll see it's locked at the moment because this thing is also going to stockpile bone mill inside of it too because this is all storage space. So it makes its way down to where the next farm is going to be. I've cleared out this space. This is where it's going to be constructed. And the first slice here is something that will be repeated over and over again, but it will get more complex as there are additional components here. But what this is essentially doing is seeing how many pink petals are inside of here and then creating more if it goes under a certain threshold. 
Once it fills up the barrel in front of it, it just means we've got a stop part of these. We can come over here and grab them. So as you can see, this is going to be the first of a few more of these, and we're going to work with the double flowers. But with those ones, we're going to do something a little special. Where the barrels go, we're actually going to double them up, bring in some crafters, and then take these flowers and turn them into dyes. Of course, pink petals can be turned into pink, but so can some of these other flowers too. Specifically, peony. I'm not sure if that's the correct way to pronounce it. This actually gives you like two for every one. So it might be more efficient in terms of a bone mill. And I haven't built this thing up fully because you can see we place it on top of mud. And then we put blocks around it so that all of the items fall on top of the mud and it can get picked up by the hopper down below. Now from here, the contraption looks relatively the same. But if we go around to the other side, you'll see there's uh, additional redstone. The thing to look at is the crafter underneath. So we take from where the flowers will end up in here and filter them into this crafter. And then we need to fill up the barrel above with the dyes. Looking at this comparator, I think it's actually a little bit of a leftover that doesn't do anything. Uh-huh, yeah, I think the next bit of redstone just runs on the assumption that there's actually flowers here moving into this spot. Yeah, that spoofed me a little bit. I now feel like I've overlooked something, but in theory, it's going to function just fine. So we put some blocks around the hopper just so that you can't sort of see through this space. And then along the side here, just like over there, we're going to add glass in front of it. And then a lamp at the top and blocks will run across the front. So that's the aesthetic for now. And remember, my partner in crime, Ren, over here at some point will come along and kind of renovate and make this stuff look cool. So these blocks are just kind of temporary for now. So let's go ahead and connect this thing. Oh, and while I was explaining all of that, this one stopped because, aha, uh -huh, it's filled up. Yep, there you go. If I were to take some of these out, it would start running again. There it goes. Okay, it's running. There's definitely a little bit of logic that got lost here because we're supposed to detect if there's flowers in here before this clock runs, but it just will run perpetually until the barrel in front is filled up. Aha! It only fills up this much because, of course, we're using signal strength 8 here. And since I've got this running, the silo has depleted a little bit. It was actually filled all the way up to this one here. I don't know why the lamp at the top is still on. Oh, apparently we still have items flowing in from where I've unloaded the shulker box. Oh, maybe there's actually a bit of a bottleneck here because this chest is full. So we have bone meal coming in at hopper speed from this side. Ah, and then additional bone meal coming in here. That does indeed make sense. Uh, there is a nifty little solution here. If I just add hoppers like this, that will now allow all of the bone mill coming through there to just filter down if ever it gets backed up and go in at the bottom. Yeah, that's one of the things about storing bone mill this way. We're constantly throttled by the hopper speed. So if we have more sources of bone mill in the future and we need to distribute them to more places, we might have to come back and reevaluate this setup so that we can move bone mill through it quicker. All right, then, you know what's next. We've got all of this done. The two tool flowers are all in place. And look at this we've got both flowers and dyes available on demand. And at some point in the future, we might extend this out in that direction and maybe put like a flower farm in the area and get a few more dyes here, too. Now, I think earlier in the episode, I mentioned I wanted to get my rooted dirt farm up and running. And as much as I want to, it's going to take a bit of time to explain and construct. And I feel like just moving on to something else for a bit. And there's some errands that I've got to run, mainly involving the postal service. So I've been sent additional stamps here to send packages to the other hermits. And then it looks like we've got two trophy updates to tend to. So Ren has reached his 250 trophy and I'll need to refund him a diamond because, of course, we changed the price. And Cleo has made it all the way to 1,000 diamonds. And I love that the hermits are sending books here. Look at this. I'm pleased to announce that beacons have now surpassed 250 diamonds in profit. And we are about to use my very last beacon. So I'll be returning there to buy some more. Oh, and in Cleo's book, uh, she says, I'm afraid the time has come to ask you again for another trophy. Please don't be afraid, Cleo. I am happy to do this. Now, all of these packages have been sitting here in my mailbox for a few days because I wasn't in the area when they arrived. You've got mail. <laughs> so I missed hearing that. 
But no worries, I have devised a solution. We are doing yet more redstone, but this will be easier than ever to understand because currently we have no mail, right? And when we have no mail, this piston will be extended. And let's pretend that we've got some mail for a second. You've got mail. <laughs> yep, we hear that sound again. Then the piston retracts. So I will go ahead and place these blocks because you understand what the smallest size of beacon looks like, right? And currently we have mail, which means that the beacon isn't going to be active. Oh, do you know what? I think I actually want this the other way around because then it means when we don't have mail, the beam is on. That's going to be awkward because there's just other redstone components here that you don't want to interact with. This is one of the things I like a lot about redstone, though. When you've got a limited amount of space, it can really challenge you. Let's cut a long story short. I ended up finding a way to send the redstone signal downwards. And you can see down there, there's a piston. So the beacon's been lowered down. So I can move it into this spot and then have some glass blocks above. And up top, we've now got our very own mailman statue. I remember Jack over here and that I actually wanted to incorporate more of these statues with time. This one over here is very simple. It's got a shield. It's got a sword. Of course, it needs a name, probably something to do with mail. You've got mail. I've got mail, apparently. Let's check it out. <laughs> and then the beam shines through the walls and I can tell that I've got some mail. But that's not all because I spent about 10 minutes messing around in creative mode to come up with Mossy the Mailman. And I just couldn't decide if this would fit in or not. Obviously, it's on a different scale. It looks really derpy. It's a little silly. But the guy's got an amazing haircut. And so I need you to comment down below and let me know, do you actually like this design? And after this video goes out, I think I'll throw up a poll on the community channel and get people to vote on if they want this one or the other guy. I just wasn't sure. What do you think? So moving on to the sales shop, things are starting to kick up a little bit with the leaderboard down there. But first, I've got to send out some mail. So Cleo is getting her 1,000 diamonds trophy. I've got a feeling it won't be long before I'll be mailing her out the next one. We're refunding Ren a diamond, and in here I've included a little instruction to donate his head to the leaderboard. And while I was working on the leaderboard, XB swung by, so he's already paid for his trophy. I just need to ship that out to him. So now this is starting to look real fancy. There are three of us tied for second place. And as you can see here, we need Ren's head on the leaderboard. And I know many more hermits have signed up. So as they reach 250 sales, I'll be including that message just to tell them to send over their heads. And since I was last here, we've had two more people sign up. Oh, I very nearly did this the wrong way. I almost sent them off with the post stamp inside of the shulker box. That is not how this thing works. So I think it's about time I gave you an update on how many diamond sales we've made. No surprises that there's nothing over here for green glass. The copper has been moving at the new price. I've even shifted some yellow terracotta. Some lime wool has moved too, so that's good. But the big one is the rooted dirt. This is why I wanted to make the rooted dirt farm, which we've got all the infrastructure to do. I've sold out the last of my supplies. And tallying up those sales, I'm now at 510. So I've earned myself the next level of trophy. Awesome. Now, one of the really inspiring builds in this area has been b Dubs's bamboo shop. So much so that other hermits are joining in on the vibe and creating really cool buildings into what's turning into a little bit of a street along here. And I would like to become a part of that. When it comes to building, I find it so much easier to have some inspirational material and then kind of remix the build and join in the vibe. And I think we can do that over here. So I've gone and claimed off this little corner here for our rooted dirt shop. And the fact that there's a bit of water behind it kind of makes me think that we could create a little boat dock inside of our shop. There's basically an opportunity here to make this really interesting. The shop will probably be called Rooted, and I'm thinking maybe we can try and have like a tree growing through the shop and coming out the side. I don't know, but the, the ideas are flowing and that's a good sign. There's also been a couple of like pop-up shops here since I was here yesterday. This is totally brand new and looks amazing. Right, now is not the time to be getting distracted by pretty builds. I need to knuckle down and get ready for the next episode and... By the way, yeah, this is really becoming a problem. Hmm. You see, my plan for the next one was to make the rooted dirt farm. That's going to be a lot of fun over there at Loglands. And create the shop as well. But again, again, 
Like, I'm getting pulled away. This feels like the most important thing I need to do. And it's just, it's too big. Yes, it is a big problem, and I really can't wait to crack on with it. But as I said, uh, the plan next episode is to take care of all the rooted dirt stuff. Now that we sort out a supply, I feel like we definitely need the farm and the shop. So anyway, if you enjoyed today's episode, please do leave a like to support the channel and subscribe to catch the future episodes of Hermitcraft, because that's it from me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.